Hello, Silicon Pioneers, and welcome to our journey into the world of semiconductors. I'm your host, Semi Sherpa, and I'll be guiding you through the intricate universe of transistors, conductors, and capacitors, where electrons perform the essential tasks that power modern technology. Today, we continue our comprehensive series on chemical mechanical planarization or CMP, and its pivotal role in silicon wafer fabrication. In this series, we're exploring the CMP process across five key episodes. In the first episode, we introduced CMP and highlighted its importance in the silicon wafer fabrication process. Now, in the second episode, we will dive deeper into the mechanics behind CMP. Future episodes will cover the mechanisms that drive CMP, the consumables used in the CMP process, and its applications in modern silicon devices. In today's episode, we'll focus on providing a foundational understanding of CMP mechanics. This episode is designed to equip beginners with essential knowledge of how CMP works. We've structured this episode into four key segments. First, we'll look at how CMP tools for semiconductor devices have evolved from early polishing equipment used for silicon wafer production. We'll take a closer look at how these tools have developed from the first generation to the third generation to improve production throughput and enhance process performance. Next, we'll examine the CMP polisher module, focusing on the latest state-of-the-art CMP polishers from applied materials. In this section, we'll cover basic CMP mechanics, explaining why the platen and head rotate in the same direction and speed, the role of the retainer ring, and how multi-zone pressure control is applied to the wafer. We'll also touch on other critical components such as the pad conditioner, the groove patterns on the CMP pad, and the polishing platen. In the third segment, we'll move on to the CMP cleaner module, where we'll explain how cleaners like Megasonic cleaners, brush cleaners, and two fluid jet cleaners work. We'll also introduce the Maringoni effect, which plays a key role in the drying process. Finally, we'll explore the endpoint detector, EPD and integrated metrology systems that help control the CMP process. We'll cover the basics of motor current EPD, optical EPD, and eddy current EPD. Additionally, we'll provide a brief introduction to real-time profile control, RTPC, and integrated metrology for better in wafer and wafer-to-wafer -wafer process consistency. Throughout this episode, we have intentionally avoided complex equations to ensure the explanations remain clear and accessible. Our goal is to provide a comprehensive understanding of the CMP process, which is critical for high-volume semiconductor manufacturing. Thank you for joining us, and we look forward to guiding you through the fascinating world of CMP. Please note that my content is exclusively for YouTube, and any uploads found elsewhere are unauthorized. Each video is meticulously crafted, akin to the precision of silicon wafer fabrication, involving a month-long process with late nights and ample coffee. Discovering my content on platforms other than YouTube is disheartening and impacts my motivation. Supporting the idea of open knowledge sharing should not be mistaken for allowing the redistribution of my content elsewhere. Your understanding and upholding creators' rights is appreciated. Strap in for an enlightening voyage to the essence of the CMP universe. Are you ready to jump? May the silicon be with you. Light speed. CMP or chemical mechanical planarization has become an essential technology, particularly as device geometries have shrunk to below 0.35 microns. This reduction in size has made it crucial to achieve flat and smooth surfaces during semiconductor manufacturing. CMP tools have played a pivotal role in enabling this advancement. In the early days of CMP technology in the market, its rapid acceptance for advanced processing led to significant growth in the capital equipment market that supported it. For several years, particularly leading up to the downturn in the semiconductor industry in 1998, the CMP market experienced an impressive average annual growth rate of slightly over 30%. By the start of 1998, more than 40 companies had adopted CMP in their production processes, and CMP has emerged as a critical enabling technology as minimum device geometries shrink to below 0.35 micron. The major suppliers of CMP tools at that time included companies such as IPAC, Ibarra, SpeedFam, Applied Materials, Strasbo, Sumitomo, and Cybeek, listed in the order of their market share. 
However, by the year 2000, the landscape had shifted significantly. Although more than 25 companies were either selling or attempting to sell CMP tools, many of these companies had a background in silicon wafer substrate polishing. Despite their experience, most of them failed to compete effectively and were eventually acquired or merged with the leading suppliers. In recent years, the CMP market has been largely dominated by three major companies, Applied Materials, AMAT, Ibarra and LAM Research Corporation, LRC. These companies have established themselves as the leading providers of CMP equipment globally. Applied Materials remains the largest player with approximately 50% of the market share, followed by Ibarra with around 30%, and LAM Research with roughly 10%. The remaining market is shared by smaller companies like Tokyo Seimitsu, Akritec, and Rivasam, which focus on niche areas of CMP technology. In this presentation, we will explore the evolution of CMP equipment, specifically focusing on how improvements in CMP technology have led to better throughput, which is a critical measure of how many wafers a CMP system can process in one hour. This throughput is typically expressed as UPH or units per hour. The development of CMP equipment began with the adaptation of silicon wafer polishing technology, and since that initial period, the primary goal has been to boost the raw throughput of these systems. One of the key methods to increase throughput involves raising the material removal rate, which is directly tied to the polishing rate of the system. According to Preston's equation, the removal rate can be increased by either increasing the relative velocity or the downforce applied during the polishing process. Therefore, by enhancing either of these parameters, it is possible to achieve higher throughput. However, it is essential to note that any increase in the removal rate must not lead to unacceptable degradation of the CMP process window. This includes avoiding issues such as increased within wafer non-uniformity, excessive planarization, or remaining topography. In other words, while pushing for higher throughput, the integrity of the polishing process must be maintained to ensure quality. Another approach to increasing throughput is by polishing more wafers simultaneously. This can be achieved by adding more modules to the equipment, such as additional heads, platens, cleaners, and even robots, which can handle multiple wafers at once. We will now examine the development history of CMP tools across three generations, a classification commonly referenced in CMP-related documents. The first generation of CMP tools was based on technology copied from silicon wafer polishing. These tools typically had one head and two platens, along with a batch type cleaner, and were capable of processing between 10 and 18 wafers per hour, which is relatively low throughput. Moving to the second generation of CMP tools, there was a significant increase in throughput, with these systems typically handling between 30 and 60 wafers per hour. These tools introduced post-CMP cleaners that provided a dry and dry out capability, which was a considerable advancement. Additionally, the second generation employed multiple heads, which was an improvement over the single head used in the first generation. The third generation of CMP tools represented a substantial leap forward, featuring revolutionary polishers designed for both high removal rates and improved planarity. These systems also included multiple cleaners enhancing the efficiency of the cleaning process compared to the first and second generations. The most advanced systems available today have further improved wafer handling capabilities, reaching throughput levels of more than 70 wafers per hour. In the following slides, we will examine the advantages and disadvantages of these design improvements by taking a closer look at each generation individually. Now, let us move on to the evolution of CMP tool designs. This evolution can be broken down into three generations, beginning with tools that were initially modified versions of silicon polishing tools. The development of these tools was driven by the industry's need for higher throughput and a lower cost of ownership. The first generation of CMP tools was based on rotational platen silicon wafer polishing tools. However, these early tools had relatively low throughput, processing only about 10 to 18 wafers per hour. These polishers utilized a single robot system to move and hold the wafer on the carrier. The polisher itself consisted of two rotating platens. One of these platens was covered with a hard pad for removing bulk material, while the other was covered with a relatively soft pad for buffing the wafer. Despite their innovative approach, these early CMP tools faced several challenges that impacted their productivity and throughput. 
First, there was the issue of pad glazing. During the wafer polishing process, the pad surface structure would also become planarized, a phenomenon that was not well understood at the time. As the pad wore down, it developed a bowl-shaped trench, which required conditioning to restore its flatness, remove material from its pores, and restore its texture. Another significant challenge was the low material removal rate or MRR. To improve the removal rate on these first-generation polishers, the rotation rate could be increased. However, this approach posed the risk of creating non-uniformity in the wafer's surface if the platen runout was not controlled. Platen runout refers to the wobble a platen experiences during rotation, and minimizing this wobble was crucial for ensuring the tool's performance. Additionally, slurry utilization in these early tools was poor. Ideally, the slurry which is essential for the polishing process, should build up on the leading edge of the carrier. Unfortunately, in many cases most of the slurry would fall off the pad and be discharged from the system, leading to inefficiencies and increased costs. Finally, early CMP tools used a batch dip bath type cleaner, where wafers were kept sitting in water until an entire cassette of wafers was completed. Only then could the entire batch of wafers be placed in a post-CMP wafer cleaner. Keeping the wafers wet until they could be cleaned was critical to achieving the desired post-CMP defectivity and related yield improvements. The second generation of CMP tools marked a significant phase of evolutionary improvements over the first generation, with a clear focus on enhancing efficiency and productivity. Unlike the first generation, which laid the foundation for CMP technology, the second generation was all about making substantial upgrades that could adapt to future technological changes. These upgrades ensured that the tools remained effective and could continue to be used in production for extended periods. One of the key advancements in the second generation of CMP tools was the significant improvement in wafer processing speeds, largely due to the transition from single-head to multi-head designs. The first-generation single-head design limited throughput, but the multi-head configuration in the second generation allowed for processing multiple wafers simultaneously. This change enabled the tools to achieve speeds of 25 to 60 wafers per hour, greatly enhancing efficiency and overall productivity in semiconductor manufacturing. One of the key features introduced in these second-generation tools was the dry-and-dry-out capability. This capability is made possible by integrating the polisher, cleaner, and dryer into a single tool. As a result, wafers are dry both when they enter and leave the tool, which helps prevent issues related to moisture retention. When CMP tools do not have dry and dry out capability, several problems can arise. Wafers that remain wet after polishing are susceptible to watermarks, stains, or other surface defects, which can reduce yield and increase defectivity. This is particularly important in metal CMP processes, where reducing moisture is crucial to prevent corrosion after the polishing step. Additionally, the absence of this capability requires wafers to be manually transferred between separate polishing and cleaning equipment, increasing the risk of contamination and extending overall processing time. By integrating the polisher and cleaner into a single tool, the dry and dry out process optimizes CMP not only for achieving flat surfaces but also for minimizing defects. This setup is particularly beneficial in clean room environments, where minimizing wafer transport time is crucial. While these integrated systems may come with higher initial costs, they ultimately reduce the overall cost of ownership by streamlining the process, eliminating the need for separate cleaning tools, and thereby lowering the total expenses associated with obtaining clean, flat wafers. Let's now discuss the design aspects of second-generation polishers. These tools retain the rotating carrier and platen designs from the first generation but incorporated numerous enhancements to improve raw throughput. Specifically, second-generation polishers can be broadly classified into two distinct types. The first type is the multi-wafer per platen polisher, which features a single large platen, approximately 22 inches in diameter, that polishes multiple wafers simultaneously on the same pad. This approach offered a significant increase in throughput, often more than doubling the efficiency compared to single-wafer systems. However, this design presented challenges. The most critical issue was the risk of processing multiple wafers together. If a wafer broke during processing, the resulting shards could become embedded in the pad, leading to scratches and gouges on the other wafers being polished simultaneously. Additionally, 
load balancing presented a subtle but significant challenge. When all heads were used simultaneously, the polishing results were generally consistent. However, if only some of the heads were used, the pad wore down unevenly, potentially leading to variations in the processing results. The second type is the multi-head multi-platin polisher, which involves a single wafer per platin but utilizes multiple platins within the system. This design allowed for more precise control over the polishing process. A key advantage of this approach was the ability to increase the relative velocity simply by moving the carrier toward the edge of the platin without increasing the platin's rotation rate. This led to a trend toward single wafer per pad processing, offering greater consistency and control. Companies such as SpeedFam IPEC, Applied Materials, LAM, and Obsidian were prominent in developing systems based on this concept. In summary, the second generation of CMP tools brought significant advancements by focusing on evolutionary improvements that increased throughput, introduced dry and dry out capabilities, and enhanced tool design to address the challenges of wafer polishing. The third generation of CMP tools represents a shift from evolutionary improvements to revolutionary polishing designs to achieve increased raw throughput values. In addition to improved throughput, third generation polishers add other process flexibility or planarization quality enhancements. The third generation polishers build on the advancements of their predecessors by integrating a range of new systems and modules. Like the second generation tools, they offer the option to be linked with post-CMP cleaners, enabling dry and dry-out capability. This integration ensures wafers remain dry at the start and end of the process, reducing the risk of defects, but the key advancements in this generation come from the integration of integrated metrology modules. These modules include motor current detection, sensor arrays for integrated steering, and in-situ optical endpoint detection methods such as thin film reflectivity. These features significantly enhance the CMP process by improving accuracy, reducing defectivity, and enabling more precise control during polishing. In response to the limitations of traditional tools, several suppliers have developed innovative approaches that offer improved CMP results. These revolutionary designs focus on achieving higher relative velocities for better planarization and throughput, optimizing the motion of pads and wafers, and introducing unique methods for delivering slurry to the wafer pad interface. Let's explore the third generation CMP tools by examining several examples that showcase the innovative approaches used in these systems. The first example is the linear type polisher introduced by LAM Research. This tool operates similarly to a belt sander, utilizing a continuous belt kept under tension by rollers. During operation, the wafer is pressed device side down against the pad while slowly rotating against the rapidly moving belt. This design necessitates a new architecture for polishing pads, specifically a single polyurethane belt without foam or felt subpads. A key feature of this system is its concurrent pad conditioning, which is achieved by mounting the polishing pads in a cylindrical configuration rather than the conventional flat surface. The linear polisher includes a specialized pad conditioner that refurbishes the pad to maintain its effectiveness. This design has demonstrated high removal rates due to the belt speed. The load downforce combined with high relative velocity minimizes film damage, making it particularly effective for applications like shallow trench isolation, SDI and interlayer dielectric, ILD, polishing, where substantial material removal is required from structures with relatively low pattern density. However, the linear motion introduces a significant challenge, since the pad moves in only one direction, it can lead to asymmetric wear. This can result in uneven polishing, leading to poor uniformity in the material removal rate MRR. The second example is the orbital type polisher. Unlike traditional designs, in this system, the carrier and pad do not rotate together. Some designs orbit the carrier while rotating the platen, while others orbit the polishing pad while rotating the carrier. Pressure is applied through two inflatable bladders, one located behind the wafer backing plate and the other beneath the flexible pad backer assembly. The advantage of the orbital motion design is that the pad revolves around an axis without rotating, allowing high relative velocities to be achieved without requiring a large tool footprint. This design enables high pad speeds while maintaining a low downforce process, which significantly improves planarization when using single polyurethane polish pads. 
Additionally, the orbital motion allows slurry to be delivered directly to the wafer surface, enhancing slurry distribution. These machines are also known for their minimal downtime due to the rapid changeover of individual polishing heads. However, the limited pad movement, while reducing slurry usage, can hinder the removal of byproducts, leading to issues such as scratches and reduced selectivity. The third example is the pad feed polisher. The pad feed polisher operates on a system where the polishing pad is held in rolls and is continuously fed onto the wafer polish table. In this process, a new section of the pad is fed out, a wafer is polished, the pad is conditioned, and then incremented forward before the next wafer is polished. This method is particularly effective for polishing pads that deliver very consistent results with the first few uses but tend to degrade rapidly with subsequent uses. Because each wafer is always polished with a fresh section of the pad, the consistency and quality of the polish are maintained throughout the process. Although the pad feed polisher does not offer significant improvements in polish performance or mechanism compared to non-pad feed polishers, it does provide a substantial advantage in tool utilization. In most other polishers, the tool must be turned off daily to remove and replace worn polishing pads, followed by a qualification process before production can resume. In contrast, a continuous feed pad system with adequate length allows fabs to process wafers continuously for up to a week without changing the pads, significantly improving CMP tool utilization and overall production efficiency. The next example is the local type rotary polisher, which is widely used by companies such as Applied Materials and Ibarra. In this design, both the wafer and the pad move in the same direction and at the same rotational speed. This design ensures that the average velocity is consistent across all points on the wafer, eliminating directional bias and avoiding asymmetric polishing issues. The larger pad size compared to the wafer also enhances slurry inflow and improves the removal of reaction byproducts, which is critical for maintaining the quality of the polishing process. As wafers have increased in size from 150 mm to 200 mm to 300 mm, it has become increasingly important to control not only the rotational speed but also the pressure applied uniformly across the wafer surface. To achieve this, a multi-zone pressure system has been developed. This system applies different pressures from the center to the edge of the wafer's backside, allowing for better control over the polishing process. As wafer sizes have grown, this system has been continuously refined by adding more pressure zones to accommodate these changes. To further improve throughput, the third-generation CMP systems have employed multi-cleaner modules instead of single cleaners, allowing them to reach processing speeds of over 70 wafers per hour. Despite these advancements, challenges remain. CMP pads still require frequent replacement, often daily or every other day in production fabs. The industry's performance requirements, such as low dishing, in wafer and wafer-to-wafer -wafer uniformity, and low defectivity, are becoming increasingly stringent. While increasing the removal rate and improving wafer handling can enhance throughput, this must be balanced with the need to avoid compromising wafer quality, as increased downforce can lead to issues like non-uniformity, delamination, dishing, and erosion. For this reason, throughput is sometimes intentionally reduced to polish wafers at a lower downforce, thereby increasing polishing time but preserving wafer integrity. As a result, recent developments have increasingly focused on improving the efficiency of the robot handling within CMP machines to better balance these competing priorities. In this section, we are going to take a closer look at and compare the polishing modules from Amat and Ibarra, two leading CMP tool makers in semiconductor manufacturing. As previously discussed, the evolution of CMP or chemical mechanical planarization, Tools has focused on improving the uniformity of material removal across the wafer while also enhancing throughput. In simpler terms, the goal has been to make sure that materials are removed more evenly from the wafer surface while speeding up the overall process. To achieve better control over material removal, the multi-zone head with a membrane has become the industry standard. This type of head allows multiple zones of the wafer to be controlled independently during polishing, improving how precisely materials can be removed. In terms of throughput, or how many wafers can be processed in a given time, there has been a shift in system design. What used to be a one-head, two-platen, one-cleaner setup has evolved to a more complex and efficient four-head, four-platen, two-cleaner system, which is now widely used in the most advanced tools from both Amat and Ibarra. 
Now, let's examine the key changes in these tools. The most significant improvements between the older and newer models from Amad and Ibarra lie in productivity. Both companies have introduced tool layouts that feature four platens and two cleaner tracks, which optimize wafer movement and enhance the efficiency of the polishing process. The head technology in these models has also advanced from controlling four or five zones to managing nine to eleven zones, improving how consistently material is removed from the wafer surface. The core components of the polisher module include the transfer system, the CMP head, the upper head, and the conditioner. Each of these components plays a crucial role in handling and processing the wafers effectively. Amat and Ibarra have taken different approaches to how they transfer wafers between stations. Amat has traditionally used a track-based system, where wafers are transported by rotating them between the different stations. For example, in Amat's earlier models like the LK system, a cross-motor or circular track was used to rotate the heads around a central axis, allowing the wafers to move continuously across three platens. This compact and efficient design allowed Amat to capture a large share of the global market. Amat continued this design approach in the LKP model, which also used a circular track for wafer movement. On the other hand, Ibarra has stuck with a linear transfer system in its equipment, starting with the 300S model and continuing through to the latest 300XA model. Unlike Amat's rotating system, Ibarra's heads are fixed to the platens, and after the CMP process is completed, the wafers are transferred between stations using a linear transfer module known as the Linear Transfer Porter, LTP. When it comes to CMP head technology, both Amat and Ibarra have increased the number of zones that their heads control. The heads, which originally controlled 5 to 7 zones, now manage up to 11 zones, allowing for finer control over each zone to ensure a more uniform material removal rate across the entire wafer. The upper head, which is also called the Upper Pneumatic Assembly, UPA, is responsible for delivering air pressure to the CMP head. This air pressure is critical during polishing because it helps maintain the right amount of force needed to remove materials evenly from the wafer. As for the conditioner, a mat has updated its design over the years. In the earlier LK model, a mat used a belt and pulley system, but in its latest models, they've switched to using a direct motor or a gearbox, which improves both the precision and reliability of the conditioning process. In summary, this comparison of a mat and Ibarra's polishing modules highlights significant technological advancements aimed at boosting productivity and improving control during the CMP process. Both companies have introduced innovations that make their tools more efficient while also providing better uniformity in material removal, helping to meet the growing demands of the semiconductor industry. In this slide, we will be discussing the Applied Materials CMP Reflection LK Polishing Unit, a highly advanced piece of equipment specifically designed for CMP process. This Reflection LK model is presented in the image on the left, highlighting its detailed and intricate design. The equipment is divided into three main sections, each playing a critical role in the CMP process. These sections are the Equipment Front End Module, EFEM, the Cleaner Module, and the Polisher Module. These components work together to ensure an efficient and seamless CMP process for semiconductor wafers. Now, let us walk through how the CMP process takes place within this sophisticated machine, following the path that the wafers take from the beginning to the end. The process begins with the loading of a front-opening unified pod known as FUP, which contains multiple wafers, onto the load port. This step marks the start of the wafer's journey through the CMP process. The next crucial part of the equipment involves robots responsible for moving the wafers between the different modules. Specifically, the front interface robot or FI robot, and the wet robot handle the movement of the wafers. The FI robot begins by checking the number of wafers inside the FUP. After confirming the wafer count, it transfers the wafers from the FUP and positions them at the pass-through and nano-load stations. At this point, the wet robot takes over, moving the wafers vertically at the pass-through station and then horizontally to the wafer input station. Once the polishing process is complete, the wet robot is again involved, transferring the wafers from the output exchanger to the input section of the cleaner module. After the wafers are cleaned, dried, and measured, the FI robot transfers the now-ready wafers back to the FUP for the final stage. At the wafer input station, the wafers encounter the wafer exchanger. This device plays a key role in transferring the wafers to the head clean loading unloading unit, also known as HCLU. As its name suggests, the HCLU performs three essential tasks, cleaning the CMP head and loading and unloading wafers onto the CMP head. The CMP head is cleaned whenever the equipment is idle to ensure that it is free from contaminants and prepared for the next round of polishing. 
The polisher module itself is composed of three polishing platens and four polishing heads, allowing three distinct CMP processes to occur on the different platens. The CMP head, equipped with a vacuum mechanism, picks up the wafer from the HCLU and moves it to the polishing platen via a rotational movement. The actual polishing of the wafer occurs through the combined application of pressure and rotation on the polishing pad. The CMP head, which is a five-zone head, is equipped with advanced technology that enables separate control of the down pressure in each of its five zones. By independently adjusting the pressure in each zone, the polishing process can be tailored to meet the specific requirements of each individual wafer. This ensures uniform material removal and produces wafers with superior flatness and surface finish. The slurry arm plays an integral role in the polishing process by dispensing CMP slurry, which is a key mixture necessary for polishing. This unit can supply up to four different types of slurry chemicals to accommodate varying polishing needs. Additionally, it is equipped with seven nozzles that rinse the CMP pads with high-pressure deionized water. This step is essential in minimizing the occurrence of scratch defects. Another vital component of the polishing system is the pad conditioner. It is outfitted with a diamond pad that scratches the surface of the CMP pad. This action rejuvenates the pad by restoring its roughness or asperity, which is crucial for maintaining a consistent material removal rate throughout the CMP process. The diamond pad's abrasive function prevents the CMP pad from becoming too smooth, which would otherwise impair its effectiveness in removing material from the wafer. Monitoring and detecting the precise endpoint of the polishing process is a critical part of ensuring high-quality results. The endpoint detector or EPD window plays a central role in this process. Positioned on the pad, the EPD sensor monitors the reflectivity of the wafer being polished. By detecting changes in the wafer's reflectivity, the EPD allows for accurate control over the polishing time. Adjusting the polishing time based on the wafer's reflectivity ensures that the optimal results are achieved, aligning the process with the specific needs of each wafer. Finally, the material removal rate or MRR can be tracked using a thickness measurement unit located in the load port. This unit measures the thickness of each wafer before and after the CMP process, allowing the MRR to be carefully monitored. The data collected from the MRR, along with the information gathered from the EPD, can be fed back into the system for the next batch of wafers. This ensures consistency in the amount of material removed during the CMP process and helps maintain the overall quality and efficiency of the operation. Moving on, we will be exploring the details of the CMP polisher module focusing specifically on the CMP head, platen, and conditioner in that order. We will begin by understanding how the CMP head and platen function within a typical CMP polisher. In this setup, both the CMP head and platen rotate in the same direction, which can be either clockwise or counterclockwise, and they rotate at the same speed. It is important to ask why this configuration is used and to understand the consequences if the speed or rotation direction differs between the two components. The primary reason for having both the head and platen rotate in the same direction and at the same speed is to maintain control over the mean material removal rate, also known as MRR, while ensuring that the material is removed uniformly across the wafer. By adjusting the rotation speed of both the platen and the head together, we can precisely control the MRR without compromising the uniformity within the wafer. This precise control is critical to achieving the desired outcomes in the CMP process. Next, let us take a closer look at the mechanics behind this setup. According to Preston's equation, the MRR is proportional to the downforce applied on the wafer and the relative velocity at the polishing site. Here, the relative velocity refers to the difference in velocity between the surfaces of the polishing pad and the wafer. The velocity at any given polishing point, which we will refer to as point S on the wafer, is influenced by several factors. These factors include the distance between the wafer center and the pad center, the angular velocities of both the wafer and the pad, as well as the specific location of point S on the wafer, defined by its radius and angle. In the top left of the figure, we see a pink vector labeled V, which represents the relative velocity at polishing position S. When there is a difference in the rotation speeds of the platen and the carrier, this relative velocity vector changes, which in turn affects the MRR at position S. The bottom left of the figure shows how these vectors distribute themselves depending on the relative speeds of the CMP head and the platen. In the scenario in the middle, where both the head and the platen rotate at equal speeds, the relative velocity vector has the same magnitude at all points on the wafer. However, while the magnitude of this velocity remains constant during the wafer's rotation, its direction continuously changes. 
This means that as the wafer rotates, each polishing point on the wafer maintains the same velocity magnitude, but the direction of the velocity vector shifts. Over the course of one full rotation of the wafer, this ensures that no specific direction is favored, leading to uniform polishing across the entire wafer without any directional bias or asymmetry. However, as depicted in the figures on the left and right, when the rotation speeds differ, the magnitude and direction of the vectors vary across the wafer. This variation results in poor MRR uniformity, which is undesirable. Therefore, when adjusting the MRR by altering the velocity in Preston's equation, it is essential to change both the platen and head rotation speeds simultaneously. This approach helps avoid degrading the uniformity within the wafer. Despite the theoretical preference for equal rotation speeds, in actual CMP polisher operations, the head and platen rotation speeds are set slightly differently. The reason for this adjustment is to prevent a situation where a given point on the wafer repeatedly passes over the same point on the pad, as shown in the top right figure. This repetition can occur if the head and platen rotate at exactly the same speed. If there is already some non-uniformity on the pad surface, perhaps due to deglazing, which refers to the diminishing abrasiveness of the pad over time, this repetitive action can transfer that non-uniformity to the wafer. This transfer can lead to MRR non-uniformity or even defects in the wafer. To prevent this issue, a slight difference in speed is introduced between the head and the platen. For instance, the head might be set at 100 revolutions per minute, while the platen is set at 97 revolutions per minute. Although this small difference does not cause significant uniformity issues, it can result in some asymmetry in the pattern on the wafer after the CMP process. This asymmetry can affect alignment or overlay marks in subsequent lithography steps, potentially leading to variations in overlay correction. To address these challenges and ensure consistent production quality, all rotation directions in the production facility are set uniformly, either clockwise or counterclockwise. This uniformity is crucial for tool-to-tool -to -tool matching and for maintaining consistent overlay control across the production line, which is essential for overall production quality. In this slide, we will explore the concept of pad rebounding and its significant impact on achieving a uniform material removal rate across the entire wafer during the CMP process. To start, it is important to remember that according to Preston's equation, uniform material removal can be accomplished by applying consistent downforce and maintaining a constant velocity. In the previous slide, we covered how uniform velocity across the wafer can be achieved by ensuring that the rotation speeds of both the head and the platen are equal. Now, we will focus on understanding how uniform down pressure across the entire wafer can be maintained. CMP carriers must meet two critical requirements. First, they must ensure that polished wafers are flat within predetermined specifications across the wafer, except for the edge exclusion region. Second, they must support polishing various films, even those with differing stress levels. This is essential because film stress can deform the wafer, altering pressure distribution and resulting in faster or slower polishing in different areas. Additionally, stress variations during the polishing cycle can further complicate the process. Achieving a high material removal rate or MRR, is crucial in CMP to produce a sufficient number of wafers per hour. To reach a high MRR, pressure during the process typically ranges between 1 and 10 PSI. For context, imagine a 200 kg sumo wrestler standing on a 300 mm wafer, which would exert approximately 4 PSI. Both the CMP pad and wafer are made of elastic materials, so under this high pressure, the pad deforms in a process known as pad rebounding. This is shown in the top right figure. Now, let us examine the role of the retainer ring in the CMP process. The retainer ring is essential for preventing the wafer from slipping between the carrier and the pad during polishing. However, pad rebounding causes the CMP pad to wrap around the wafer's edge, which significantly increases pressure at the edge. This higher edge pressure leads to an excessively high MRR at the wafer's edge. During the early stages of polishing, the wafer's periphery is removed more rapidly, causing a dull edge. This presents a problem in semiconductor manufacturing because process uniformity at the wafer's extreme edge is crucial for maximizing chip yield, particularly as more chips are located near the edge. As the pad bounces off the wafer's edge, adjacent regions experience lower pressure, resulting in uneven material removal. To mitigate the effects of pad rebounding, manufacturers are increasingly adopting the independent application of pressure to the retainer ring, as illustrated in the bottom right figure. While this adjustment helps reduce pad deformation, it does not completely eliminate it. This ongoing challenge illustrates the difficulty in maintaining precise control over the CMP process.
Another significant but less frequently discussed issue is the high MRR caused by step heights at the wafer edge exclusion region in product wafers. During photolithography and dry etching, materials in this region may be removed, leaving behind a large step height. This step height concentrates pressure at the wafer's edge, leading to higher MRR in those areas. As a result, achieving uniform MRR at the wafer edges is a complex task. It requires careful consideration of both pad rebounding and the step height caused by the wafer edge exclusion. These factors together create challenges in controlling the CMP process and ensuring uniform material removal, especially at the wafer edges where precision is critical. Regarding the retainer ring, it undergoes significant pressure during CMP, so it must be made from durable materials with low friction and high chemical resistance. Common materials include PPS, PEAK, and SUS. The retainer ring also features grooves to improve slurry flow and facilitate the removal of byproducts. Typically, the retainer ring has a replacement cycle of approximately 100 hours and is often replaced alongside the membrane. Moving on, we will explore the detailed mechanism of CMP pressure zone control and its critical role in achieving uniform material removal rate or MRR across the entire wafer surface. As the CMP polisher module has evolved, the demand for more precise pressure control has intensified, especially with the increase in wafer sizes. Enhancing MRR uniformity and processing more wafers per unit hour are central objectives in this technological evolution. To improve polishing uniformity, Applied Materials was the first to introduce a membrane structure in the CMP head, which significantly enhanced CMP performance and led to a substantial gain in market share during the era of 200mm wafer production. Let us now delve into the specific mechanism of zone pressure control, using a 5-zone configuration as an example. In this configuration, the wafer surface is divided into 5 distinct zones. A diaphragm structure within the membrane allows each of these zones to be controlled independently. When we look at the cross-sectional view of a 5-zone membrane, we see that the outermost zone is labeled Z1, while the center zone is labeled Z5. Although these zones are separated by partitions, it is important to understand that the membrane is made of silicone rubber. This material property causes the pressure applied to one zone to influence adjacent zones, despite the partitions. For instance, if pressure is applied to Z2, the membrane expands, and this expansion inevitably affects both Z1 and Z2 leading to an increase in pressure in both zones. Similarly, if Z1 is held at a high pressure and the pressure in Z2 is then increased, Z1 may remain relatively stable, but the pressure in Z3 will rise. This interdependence between the zones reveals the inherent challenge in achieving completely independent control of each zone. The structure and behavior of the outermost zone, Z1, are particularly crucial when it comes to controlling the pressure at the wafer edge. The Z1 zone is designed with internal and external clamps that fill from the inside and outside. This design ensures that when pressure is applied, the membrane expands downward rather than sideways, preventing interference with the retaining ring and ensuring that the membrane maintains its shape. To effectively improve the polishing performance at the wafer edge, a thorough understanding of the Z1 structure and its behavior under pressure is essential. When pressure is applied to the membrane, a reactive force lifts the wafer carrier upward. This upward movement can compromise the effectiveness of the retaining ring, potentially leading to the wafer slipping out during the process. To counteract this, the pressure applied to the retainer ring must be higher than that applied to the membrane. The retainer ring is pressurized by introducing air pressure into a chamber, which pushes the carrier downward and presses the retainer ring against the wafer, securing it in place. The relationship between the pressures applied to the membrane and the retainer ring is complex and directly impacts the pressure exerted on each wafer zone. Applied Materials provides empirical equations for different CMP head models and tables that allow operators to translate the applied pressure values into the corresponding pressures on each wafer zone. Typically, to prevent the wafer from slipping out, the ratio of retainer ring pressure to the average membrane pressure should be maintained within a range of 0.5 to 1.2. In conclusion, CMP pressure zone control involves a delicate and intricate balance between the pressures applied to various zones of the wafer and the retainer ring. This balance is critical for achieving uniform MRR across the wafer, especially as wafer sizes continue to grow, demanding more sophisticated and precise control mechanisms. Mastering the control of these pressures is essential for optimizing the CMP process and ensuring the consistent production of high-quality wafers. In this slide, we will examine how CMP equipment controls the rotation of the wafer head and regulates air pressure, which are crucial for achieving precise pressure control across different zones during the CMP process.
The wafer head in the CMP polisher module not only grips and rotates the wafer but also manages air pressure to control the pressure applied to various zones on the wafer surface. To simplify this idea, think of air tubes supplying pressure to each zone individually. Naturally, you might wonder what happens when the head rotates. Wouldn't the air tubes become tangled as the head spins? This is a valid concern. The key component that addresses this challenge is called a rotary union, sometimes referred to as a rotary joint. This component is vital because it allows multiple independent pressures to be delivered through a rotating shaft without the risk of air tubes twisting or tangling. The rotary union achieves this by having multiple chambers inside it, each sealed separately to prevent cross-interference between pressures. This sealing process within the chambers is crucial for maintaining stable and independent pressure delivery to each zone. In the image shown at the top left of the slide, you can see a six-port rotary union used in a CMP spindle for a 200mm wafer. When we refer to a six-port rotary union, it means that six separate pressures can be independently delivered to the wafer head. These pressures correspond to five zones across the wafer surface, plus an additional pressure applied to the retainer ring. For a five-zone head, six ports are needed, including the retainer ring. For a head with seven zones, eight ports are required, and for an 11-zone head, 12 ports are necessary. Key manufacturers of these rotary unions include Dublin from the United States and Nippon Pillar from Japan, with Applied Materials and Ibarra being among the companies that use these products in their CMP equipment. The rotary union is installed between the MKS box and the spindle, directly connecting to the spindle at its top. The MKS box contains regulators that precisely control the pneumatic pressure being supplied from the main air source. The spindle is the rotating shaft responsible for turning the wafer head carrier, and it is powered by a direct drive motor. The motor itself is a key component, and CMP equipment typically employs direct drive motors from companies like Cole Morgan or Yaskawa. These motors are known for their high efficiency, low noise levels, long lifespan, and their ability to provide high torque output even at low speeds, such as 100 revolutions per minute. In everyday life, an example of a direct drive motor can be found in modern washing machines. Unlike traditional motors, direct drive motors have a hollow center allowing for customizable shaft designs to fit different applications. This entire system, which facilitates both wafer rotation and air pressure delivery, is collectively referred to as the Upper Pneumatic Assembly, UPA. The UPA is composed of four main components, the rotary union, the spindle assembly, the direct motor, and the sweep assembly. The lower part of the UPA is connected to the CMP carrier head through a housing structure. Additionally, the spindle is equipped with a linear motion guide that allows it to move side to side in a sweeping motion. For example, in an LK cross configuration, four sweep units are installed to execute this sweeping movement. To summarize, the upper pneumatic assembly plays a critical role in CMP operations by ensuring that both the rotation of the wafer and the delivery of air pressure to various zones are handled with precision. Each component, from the rotary union to the direct drive motor, works together to maintain effective pressure control and ensure smooth and accurate processing of the wafer during CMP operations. In this slide, we will explore in detail how air pressure is controlled within the CMP head, focusing specifically on the equipment produced by applied materials. The CMP polishing head, also referred to as the top ring or carrier, is a critical component in the polishing process. Its main function is to press the entire surface of the wafer against the polishing pad on the platen while simultaneously applying pressure to the backside of the wafer to facilitate the polishing action. This means that the CMP head is directly involved in both pressure application and rotation, making it one of the most essential components in the CMP system, as it directly affects the material removal rate and the uniformity of the polish across the wafer surface. Given the significance of pressure and rotation in determining both the material removal rate and the uniformity of polishing, the CMP head demands a high level of precision. Early designs of CMP heads employed various methods, including the gimbal system, which relied on a backing material elastomer, and the back pressure system, which utilized a bladder. However, in modern semiconductor device fabrication, the floating membrane type has become the standard due to its superior ability to achieve consistent results. On the other hand, when polishing silicon wafers after the slicing process for wafer production, the process is relatively simpler and less technically demanding. As a result, to reduce costs, Polishing heads that incorporate backing material adhered to the membrane are often used in these cases. Let's now take a closer look at the structure and characteristics of the Titan Contour Head, one of the most representative CMP heads from applied materials. The CMP head is composed of three main components. 
The first component is the housing. This part is attached to the spindle, which is responsible for rotating the entire head. The housing includes a flange, which is the part that clamps the spindle to the head, ensuring a secure and stable connection. The flange features six ports that connect to the rotary union, allowing the air path to continue through the system. Within the flange, you can observe six holes that are designed to receive air pressure. Importantly, the air used is not regular atmospheric air but general nitrogen gas. This choice of gas helps to minimize the risk of contamination within the equipment in case of a leak and reduces the presence of impurities that could potentially harm the membrane or seals, thereby extending the longevity and reliability of the system. The second component is the carrier. This section of the CMP head is responsible for transferring pressure to the retainer ring, which prevents the wafer from slipping out during the polishing process. The operating principle involves a rolling seal, which seals the space between the housing and the carrier, creating a chamber. When pneumatic pressure is applied to this chamber, the housing, which is fixed by the spindle, remains stationary, while the carrier is pushed downward. This downward movement causes the retaining ring to make contact with the polishing pad, applying the necessary pressure to the retaining ring. Additionally, the gimbal rod is an important feature that allows the wafer to naturally follow the surface of the polishing pad during the CMP process, supporting the wafer's vertical movement and ensuring that it can adapt smoothly to the contours of the pad. The third component is the membrane. The membrane is an elastic film that forms a chamber and is responsible for applying direct pressure to the backside of the wafer. To effectively control the pressure across different zones of the membrane, independent air paths are established from the flange to each specific zone within the membrane. This setup ensures precise pressure control in each zone, allowing for fine-tuned adjustments that enhance the uniformity and effectiveness of the polishing process. Additionally, the membrane is equipped with a sensor known as the sensor plunge, which detects whether the wafer is present or absent, ensuring the process is only initiated when the wafer is correctly positioned. In this slide, we will discuss the role and components of the conditioner in the CMP polishing process. As the polishing process progresses, the pores on the surface of the pad, which is responsible for polishing the wafer, gradually become clogged with debris. Additionally, due to the relative rotational movement and trajectory between the pad and the wafer, differences in wear occur between the center, middle, and edge of the pad. This situation necessitates refreshing the pad to maintain its asperity and flatness over a long period. This is essential to ensure that the material removal rate, MRR, and the planarity of the wafer remain consistent, which in turn enhances the uniformity and stability of the process. The module within the CMP equipment that performs this critical function is known as the conditioner. A good conditioner must be capable of applying uniform pressure consistently across the pad surface, enabling the pad to be refreshed at a consistent wear rate. The effectiveness of the conditioner in maintaining pad condition is crucial because any decline in the pad surface quality can lead to a reduction in the MRR and process instability. To address this challenge, advanced conditioning systems such as the High Performance Pad Conditioning, HPPC, ARM have been developed by Applied Materials. The HPPC ARM allows for real-time monitoring and adjustment of the pad conditioning process, ensuring that the pad maintains its optimal surface texture. This system can dynamically adjust the downforce applied to the pad conditioning disc, maintaining stable conditioning torque, which is vital for consistent pad performance and, consequently, consistent wafer polishing results. The conditioner is composed of several key components, the base unit, the arm unit, the head unit, and the disc. The base unit serves a dual purpose. It secures the entire conditioner module to the equipment while also supporting the reaction force transmitted from the disc, allowing the disc to press against the pad with the desired force. To strengthen the support against reaction forces and moments, a two-stage support structure incorporating either cross-roller bearings or regular ball bearings is applied. Additionally, the base unit generates a sweep motion that ensures the disc makes broad contact with the pad surface. This sweep motion is critical and is controlled using a harmonic drive reducer and a servo motor to ensure smooth and controllable movement. The HPPC ARM's design also incorporates sensors that measure pad conditioning sweep torque, which is used to monitor and adjust the conditioning process in real time. The ARM unit connects the base unit to the head unit. It plays a vital role in transmitting the rotational force from the sweep motion to the disc without loss and in supporting the force exerted by the disc onto the pad without deformation. The ARM unit also acts as a conduit for air pressure and electrical wiring that run from the base unit to the head unit. As the pad wears down, its thickness decreases, causing the ARM unit to gradually lower. A sensor measures the gap between the ARM and the turntable to monitor the degree of pad wear, 
which is crucial for maintaining consistent conditioning across the pad surface. The head unit is responsible for pressing the disc onto the pad with a consistent downward force, a process known as the dressing motion, while also imparting rotational motion to the disc. Since the head unit is the part closest to the pad and exposed to moisture, it incorporates structures such as a labyrinth design and an N2 blow system to prevent external moisture from infiltrating the internal drive mechanisms. Additionally, to ensure that the disc maintains uniform surface pressure on the pad regardless of any curvature in the pad, various gimbal structures are used to adjust the posture of the disc. The HPPC ARMS closed loop control system plays a critical role here, dynamically adjusting the dressing force to maintain stable pad conditioning, which directly influences the uniformity and stability of the CMP process. Finally, the disc itself directly contacts the pad and performs the actual task of refreshing the pad. The disc is a critical consumable component in the CMP process, along with slurry and the pad. As the disc wears down, its aggressiveness decreases, leading to reduced friction and less effective conditioning. The HPPC arm monitors these changes in real time by tracking the pad conditioning torque, allowing for timely adjustments to the conditioning process. This ensures that the pad remains in optimal condition throughout its life cycle, minimizing the risk of process variability and ensuring consistent polishing performance. In this slide, we will focus on understanding the purpose of the groove design on CMP pads and how it addresses the issue of the back mixing area. Achieving uniform distribution of CMP slurry and efficient removal of byproducts is crucial, as both factors directly influence the material removal rate, MRR. Now, let's analyze the slurry fluid dynamics on the wafer surface during the CMP process to gain a better understanding of how this issue can be managed. For simplicity, we will assume that the slurry flow rate is proportional to the average velocity of both the CMP pad and the wafer. This assumption means that the slurry flow rate closely matches the surface velocity of either the wafer or the pad. The velocity of the wafer and the pad is visually represented in the diagram on the left. On the right side of the wafer, the wafer and pad rotate in the same direction. On the left side of the wafer, however, the wafer and pad rotate in opposite directions. As a result, when we average the velocity of the wafer and the pad together, there is a specific area where the average slurry velocity is nearly zero. This area is referred to as the back mixing area, where the slurry has difficulty flowing in and out efficiently. This issue is clearly observed in the case of the R0 CMP pad, which features grooves only in concentric positions without any grooves in the radial direction. In this back mixing area, slurry cannot flow in easily, and the byproducts from the polishing process are not expelled effectively. Consequently, the surface temperature in this area rises, leading to poor material removal rates and suboptimal planarity across the wafer. In contrast, the R32 CMP pad is designed with grooves that extend in both concentric and radial directions. The grooves in the radial direction help spread the slurry more uniformly along the groove channels, thereby minimizing the back mixing area. Additionally, the radial grooves enable faster slurry spreading, achieving uniform slurry distribution in a shorter time. Therefore, the groove design of a CMP pad must be carefully considered, taking into account the fluid dynamics of the slurry, such as its viscosity. An effective groove design significantly improves slurry distribution uniformity, reduces the back mixing area, and enhances both the material removal rate and wafer planarity during the CMP process. In this slide, we will explore the function of the CMP platen, which is a key component in the chemical mechanical planarization process. The CMP polisher contains three distinct platens, and each platen is specifically designed to carry out a different stage of the CMP process on its respective pad. The pressure applied during the CMP process is remarkably high, equating to the weight of a 200 kg sumo wrestler standing on a 300 mm wafer. Despite the intense pressure involved, both the platen and the polishing head must rotate at a stable speed of approximately 100 revolutions per minute. This speed must remain consistent even under the significant friction generated between the head and the platen during polishing. In the LK model, a combination of a gearbox and a belt and pulley system controls the rotation of the platen. It is important to recognize that the rotation center of the platen does not align with the rotation center of the motor. To address this, rotational force is transmitted from the motor to the platen via the gearbox and the belt pulley system. The reason for incorporating a gearbox is that while we need a low rotational speed, around 100 revolutions per minute, the motor operates at a much higher speed. This difference in speed requires conversion through the gearbox to allow the platen to rotate more slowly, while still maintaining high torque to ensure smooth operation. You can compare this to using higher gears on a bicycle when climbing a hill. The higher gear provides more torque, 
which makes it easier to maintain control even at slower speeds. However, in the LKP model, which is an advancement in CMP tool design, a direct drive motor is used instead of a belt and pulley system. This direct drive motor removes the need for those components and directly delivers a slower and more stable rotational speed. The improvement brought by this design lies in its efficiency and reliability during operation. The direct drive motor provides a significant advantage over earlier gear motors by delivering high torque even at low speeds, which is crucial for maintaining the consistency needed in the CMP process. Now, let us consider the temperature control mechanisms within the platen. Inside the platen, cooling water is circulated to lower the temperature of the CMP pad during the polishing process. This cooling system is essential because it helps prevent the CMP pad from detaching from the platen due to heat buildup during operation. While the cooling system is effective in this regard, it is less efficient at ensuring uniform temperature distribution across the entire pad. Achieving temperature uniformity remains a challenge, though newer advancements in technology are steadily improving this aspect. More modern CMP models are equipped with advanced temperature control and monitoring systems, which contribute to greater consistency and precision during the polishing phase. Additionally, the platen houses the sensors for the endpoint detector, EPD, which play a vital role in monitoring the polishing process. These sensors are critical for determining when the material removal process has achieved the desired outcome. The ongoing evolution of CMP platen design continues to enhance both precision and overall performance, which directly impacts the quality and flatness of polished wafers. In summary, the CMP platen plays an essential role in ensuring the proper rotation, pressure, and temperature control required for successful wafer polishing. As designs evolve from the use of belt and pulley systems to direct drive motors, alongside advancements in temperature regulation, the CMP process becomes more efficient and reliable. These improvements directly contribute to achieving higher quality, flatter wafers, which are essential for the semiconductor manufacturing process.